From Hollywood, the NBC Theater presents... Screen Director's Assignment, Production, Hold Back the Dawn, Director, Mitchell Lyson, Stars, Charles Boyer, Vanessa Brown... The Hollywood screen directors present a story fashioned for the heart. Hold Back the Dawn, starring Charles Boyer with Vanessa Brown, and introducing the director of the film, Mitchell Lyson. Some weeks ago, the NBC Theater introduced one of Hollywood's most expert directors of motion picture comedy. Tonight, he is our guest once again, as we present a film story of a quite different character. Thus, an impressive versatility is limelighted by the contrast between comedy and romantic drama, two forms of entertainment vividly directed by the same artist. Ladies and gentlemen, the director of such excellent films as Lady in the Dark, Kitty, To Each His Own, and tonight's story... Hold Back the Dawn, Mr. Mitchell Lyson. Thank you, thank you. Hold Back the Dawn was a rather unusual film which tried to tell a story of how a motion picture is made. And that's how I happened to end up in front of the camera myself, managing somehow to act the part of a screen director named Mitchell Lyson. My job in the opening sequence was to listen as a fascinating rascal, down on his luck, tried to sell his story to motion pictures. Hold Back the Dawn is the story he told me. And now, Charles Boyer, starring in his original role of George Iscavescu, with Vanessa Brown as Emmy. On one side of the high-wire fence, standing in the desert heat, the stars and stripes flutter in the sunshine. For many waiting on the Mexican side, that flag is the goal. The soil it flies over the dream. To George Iscovescu, barely within the law, international confidence man, gigolo, it merely means another people to exploit. But in his interview with the American consul on the Mexican side, George Iscovescu has met defeat for the third time in a year. Bewildered, despairing at last, Georges Iscovescu leaves the office of the council. A very relaxed, cynical stranger speaks to him as he comes into the waiting room. Well, how did it go, Iscovescu? Eh? I beg your pardon? Any luck this time? Luck? I must wait seven more years to enter the United States. Uh, the Romanian quota is very small. And very crowded. Yes, yes, I know that. But seven years, this heat, this filth, with these flies, and this prison sentence. Now, what are your plans? Oh, I don't know. Find a cheaper hotel. Wait. Oh, try the Hotel Esperanza. Paint is peeling, the faucets drip. There are no shades on the light bulbs. But what do you expect at a dollar a day? If you can get a room. Is such a wretched place hard to get into? Yeah, it's crammed with people wanting to get into the States. Hmm. Esperanza. Yeah, tell him I sent you. Who are you? Inspector Hammock. Inspector Hammock? Of the United States Immigration Department, yeah. Good luck, Iscovescu. Why don't you watch where you're driving? Why don't you watch where you're walking? Uh, you American tourists with your high-powered station wagons. But this isn't a high-powered station wagon, and it isn't mine. I borrowed it from the school. You don't also deny that you are an American, do you? I gather you don't like Americans. Very little. Well, I'm sorry. Good day. And the next time, watch where you're... Oh, my station wagon! Oh, and the next time, madam, 
Watch where you're going. Oh, <laughs> oh what a mess. Good day. Bartender, tequila here. And now we present the dance sensation of the Riviera. Anita! And Disco Vesco. Anita! <laughs> well, how good to see you again. How on earth? Wait, the last time we were together was in uh, 1939, in Cannes. Ah, you remember that. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Where are you staying, George? Oh, a charming drain pipe known as the Esperanza. I serve time there. Oh. How long for your quota? I don't know. I didn't wait for my quota. How did you get in? You see this diamond ring? Magnificent. I married an American, a jockey of all things. And what? And simple. Marry an American and you get into the country in four weeks. It's as easy as that? This town is full of American women, George. Once over the border, you just get a divorce. Did you? Of course. In America, we could be wonderful together, George. Bartender, anything the lady wants, I must go. No, George, where? The village garage. I have a sudden definite interest in a wrecked station wagon there. Oh, excuse me, madam. What? Oh, it's you again. Yes, I had to come here. You see, I feel partly to blame for your car being here in the garage. Don't upset yourself about it. No, no, please. I'm very sorry to have helped uh, spoil your vacation. Weekend. I've only the weekend off from school. A student? Oh, no, I'm a teacher. Oh. In fact, I even borrowed the station wagon from school. And now look at it. Oh, I'm sincerely sorry. Well... I'd better make a phone call. My folks at home will be worried about me. Yes, yes, of course they will. Uh, your parents and perhaps your husband? Oh, no, I'm not married. <laughs> My name is Iscovescu. I'm Miss Brown. George Iscovescu. Emmy Brown. <laughs> <laughs> That's much better now. You see, we Americans aren't really so awful. Miss Brown, would you take off your hat, please? Why... What an odd request. Wouldn't the school board approve? W well, all right. There. Amazing. Why? She had the same hair, only it was always blown by the wind that winter at St. Moritz. Who were you talking about? Miss Brown, you thought I was bitter when we met today. But you weren't sweet. It was because I saw another woman in your face, Margot. Margot? Yes, Margot. Oh, that's over now. Keep looking at me, please. Ah, oh, it's like... like a clean, fresh mountain breeze on a stifling day. You're the strangest man. <laughs> Perhaps the loneliest. Um, well, I, uh... Uh, think perhaps I'd better be looking for lodgings no. if I'm not going to spend the night in the no, marketplace. Let me try this Beranza. I have some influence there. Come in, George. Anita. Well, what are you doing in my room, Anita? I took the room next door, and the connecting door was unlocked. Oh, so you take the only remaining room in the hotel. No wonder Miss Brown must spend the night in a leather couch in the lobby. Miss Brown? Uh, well, never mind. What do you want? I've been thinking about you, darling. Hmm? How you held me when we danced. Oh. Those jiggly eyes of yours. You cold, selfish, scheming. Exciting. Oh, George, we could be wonderful together. Anita, you can help me. How? That uh, wedding ring on your finger. What do you want it for? Miss Brown? Of course, I'll be sure. I told you she's asleep on a couch in the lobby. I must speak to her, and I must have the ring. Understand? Uh -huh. Take it. <laughs> Thank you. Any means at all to accomplish our end, George. Good luck with Miss Brown. <laughs> Brown. Oh, oh, 
Oh, is it morning? No, but I've been sitting here all night, Miss Brown, watching you sleep on that couch. Oh, no. You've no right to be here. No, no right to be here. No right to sit watching your face, learning it like a poem. Oh, you must go away, please, right now. Oh, you mustn't be afraid, Miss Brown. We are alike, we two. Like two trains, halted for a moment at some mysterious station in the darkness, but... We are going in different directions. We can't change our course any more than, than we can hold back the dawn. It, it is getting light, isn't it? Yes, soon they'll be waking up. The shops will open. Your car will be repaired. And you will be gone forever. But to have seen you was to see the sun rise once more. To hear the enchantment of a woman's voice. To feel her nearness. The warmth of her lips. No, please. Look at your hand, Emmy. The left one. A wedding ring? Yes. I put it on your hand while you slept. It was my mother's. <laughs> oh, how sweet. Ah, Emmy, I've been so terribly lonesome. Other people are lonesome too, George. And I've always known, deep in my heart, that someday there'd be someone waiting for me, even at the end of the world. And is this that end of the world, Amy? And the beginning, George. Oh, Amy, my darling. See, it's going light. Morning. You were right, darling. We couldn't hold back the dawn. For here it comes at last. Yes, at last. You are listening to the Hollywood Screen Director's presentation of Hold Back the Dawn, starring Charles Boyer with Vanessa Brown and introducing the director of the film, Mitchell Lyson. Darling, order me another drink and listen to this. It's too precious. Anna, Anita, <laughs> perhaps I should resent you reading my wife's letters aloud to me in a bar. <laughs> oh, but listen, will you? Four more weeks, darling, and then you can join me here in California and we'll be together forever. <laughs> Lovingly, darling, your wife, Emmy. <laughs> <laughs> my wife is wonderful. Never see her? Write her a few letters, call her up once or twice. And once across the border... We'll be on our merry way to New York. With a short stop in Azusa. <laughs> Half an hour, you know, long enough to tell Amy of a love that was too great to last. A mistake that was too lovely not to have been made. That she was too good and you were too low. <laughs> Half an hour, Anita. She'll brush off like a drop of rain. <laughs> oh, you swine. Everybody having a good time? Uh-oh. Inspector... Hammer. Hello, folks. Hello, Escovescu. Remember me? Oh, of course. The immigration officer. Uh, how's the uh, hotel I recommended? Did they? <laughs> How are you, Anita? How's your husband? Fine. Is he still in the cast? Cast? What cast? You mean you don't know he was hurt in a race at Santa Anita? I... We are divorced. No. That beautiful love match? Uh. Isn't it a shame how love cools off the minute people get into the United States? Well, will you excuse me, please? I really must... From uh... now on, we're going to be very harsh on people who marry for immigration and not for love. <laughs> well, excuse me, I just remembered uh, I must write several important letters in my room. Forgive me, please. Mm. Amy. Surprise. Amy, what? what, what I, I wasn't expecting you. I know. 
I brought you a wedding cake. Oh, all the way from Azusa? Mother baked it. Oh, bless her. My principal gave me a week off for a honeymoon with you. He gave me the station wagon again. Bless him, too. <laughs> I'm going to stay here a whole week with you. Uh, stay here? A week? Oh, Oh, no, Well, what's no. the matter, dear? Well, I mean, I won't let you stay here. You see, it's, uh, it's horrible. I don't mind. Oh, this place is for cockroaches, for despair, for hammocks. Hammocks? Well, did I say that? Um, oh, it's a, it's a kind of uh, scorpion. Yes, you know, this, this is, in every respect, no place for us to begin our lives together. Oh, George. Darling, you came for a honeymoon? We'll go on a honeymoon. A whole week. <laughs> Darling, listen to the windshield wipers. Well, they're all right, aren't they? Listen to their rhythm. They seem to be saying, together, 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 together. Can you hear it? Yes, yes, I can hear it. Oh, George, there's a sweet old Mexican church. I'd like to go in for a minute, please. All right, if you like. <laughs> I'm sorry if I cried in church, George. I was so happy. Oh, I'm very glad. George, this olive tree beside the walk... Yes? Stop here. They say if married couples shake the tree, however many olives fall, they'll have that many children. <laughs> that's a foolish legend, Amy. Then let's be foolish, George. Shake the tree. <laughs> Very well. Very well. One, two, three. Three olives. <laughs> Boys or girls? Well, this one is Joshua, after my father. This one's Helen, because I always wanted to be named Helen. I hate Emmy. And this one? What was your father's name? Gregor. He shall be Gregor. George. Yes, Amy? Kiss me. Oh, in front of the three children? <laughs> yes. So be it, Amy. Thank you, George. Hmm. You are a curious thing. I love my husband very much. It's very strange, but kissing you just now was, was like kissing fresh snow. Sleeping in the station wagon like this. Well, I'm not sure yet. Romanian I am, but gypsy I am not. It's a beauteous evening. Calm and free. The holy time is as quiet as a nun. All of these evenings have been lovely. But tomorrow, our honeymoon's over. I must go back to the States. Yes, but only three more weeks apart. I wonder how the immigration authorities would like to be without their wives for three weeks. <laughs> I've seen their wives. They liked it very much. <laughs> Good night, darling. Good night, Emmy. I love my husband very much. The Esperanza again. Oh, I hate to see this come to an end. We'll be together again in three weeks. Now, you run up to your room and freshen up. You know you've got a five-hour drive ahead of you. I'll attend to the car for you. I'll only be a few minutes, George. All right. George! George! Anita! <laughs> Welcome back. 
Great news, George. We're leaving for New York and the Club Casanova just as soon as you're over the border. No, I'm not going right on to New York. The stopover in Azusa will only be a half hour, you said. It will be however long it takes. Oh, George. Don't tell me you like that girl. Well, let's say I like her enough not to behave like a complete swine for once in my life. I'll join you in New York when I can. No, George. I will not stand in Times Square and whistle for you. Now, listen to me. I'll buzz and rattle, George, like a rattlesnake. Anytime. Don't tread on me, George. Don't tread on me. <laughs> May I come in? Of course. Who are you? You are Mrs. Escovescu? Yes, why? I'd like you to return my wedding ring. Well, what would I be doing with your ring? You're wearing it. This? That. It belonged to my husband's mother. <laughs> Isn't it just wonderful? He always knows how to pluck a heartstring. What are you talking about? Tell me. Darling, it was all my idea. What idea? Tell me. About his marrying you just to get across the border. You're lying. Read the engraving inside the ring. To toots for keys. Get out! No. Sit down, dear. Is it going to be all about you and me and just lots of other women? And George and love. And immigration, darling. Immigration. Emmy, may I come in? Come in, George. Well, the car is all ready to go, dear. And I've just come up to tell... George. Anita was just here. Yes? She told me everything. What did she tell you? About... The ring, about all the other women, about the way you made your living, about marrying me just to get into the United States. True enough. Are you, are you going to expose me to the immigration authorities? No. Thank you, Emmy. <laughs> Always been full of words, large, fancy words. Now, just one word. Thanks. I've always been full of words, too. Not very fancy. Now just one word, George. Goodbye. George, can't you do anything besides lie on that bed all day and smoke cigarettes and stare at the ceiling? Oh, please, please, Anita, quiet. George, you look strange. Be quiet. What are you staring at? Amy. Amy? Amy, be careful. Look out. George, what's the matter? Are you sick or something? Huh? Anita, something's happened to Amy on the road. What? All at once I saw her. The car spinning and skidding. The brakes screaming. Oh, nonsense. I wonder. I wonder. <laughs> I'll go, George. No, I'll go. I'll go. Iscovescu. Well, Inspector? I'm sorry. My wife? Help me. My wife? There's been an accident. Oh, no. Where is she? A general hospital, Los Angeles. I must have a car. You can't cross the border, man. Who's got a car? Anita, who can lend me a car? Laurie is downstairs at the desk. Now, get out of my way. You can't crash the border, man. We'll bring you back and never let you in again. Get out of my way, I said. Escovescu? Yes, Doctor. How is she? Where's my wife? In here. But I must tell you, she has no will to live. Has no fight in her. No spirit. She hasn't spoken since we brought her in. Oh, is this uh, is a room? Do what you can. Yes, thank you, Doctor. Emmy. Emmy, it's George. I'm here, darling. Emmy. Do you hear me, dearest? I'm here. We're together. Remember? That night, the car, the rain, the windshield wiper speaking to us. Remember? Together. Together. 
Now try to breathe. Together. 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 Remember Amy? Amy? Amy. George! No, 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 no. Rest. Rest. You must sleep. Good morning, Mr. Escovescu. Oh, good morning, Doctor. I was just going in to see my wife again. How is she? Uh, your seeing her yesterday worked wonders. May I go in now? Why, certainly. Thank you, Doctor. Just a minute, Mr. Escovescu. Inspector Hammer. You crashed the border. I know. I came up after you. Naturally. You'll never get into the States now. Good enough. Unless I forget what I saw. If I can't remember the incident, I can't report it, can I? Inspector Hammock, you... Save it, save it. You're the husband of an American wife. You're made for each other, and she's in there. Don't keep an American woman waiting if she's Kovescu. They don't like it. Thank you, Inspector. Good luck, Kovescu. Amy. George, we are together. Yes, my darling. Always and forever. George. Mm. Amy, do you know, I love my wife very much. Our guests will return in just a moment. Next week, the NBC Theater indulges in a little keyhole peeping, all for the sake of laughter. As for the first time on the air, we present the Columbia Pictures comedy, Her Husband's Affairs. And our star will be Lucille Ball. And now, here are tonight's stars, Charles Boyer and Vanessa Brown and screen director Mitchell Lyson. Vanessa... You know, uh, one of the most instructive things about working with Mitchell Lyson was seeing a director become an actor. Did Mr. Lyson really act in Hold Back the Dawn? Oh, yes, in a very difficult role. He played the part of Mitchell Lyson. Probably the most abominable casting I've ever done. <laughs> Vanessa, as a director, Mitch told us that we must always be prepared to improvise something if we forget our lines. Certainly, it's the easiest thing in the world. Certainly. So... When we did the picture, Mitch very carefully memorized his part and then walked in front of the camera for our scene together. And then, do you know what happened? What? Nothing. <laughs> I forgot my lines. <laughs> well, didn't you improvise something, Mr. Lyson? Oh, only the most pained expression I've ever seen on a director's face. So you did the scene again? Oh, yes, to be precise, five times. Look, I have only one thing to say in my defense. And that is, Mr. Lyson? Everything was the director's fault. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mitch, the director was one of the finest in Hollywood. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. And good night to you, Charles Boyer, Vanessa Brown, and Mitchell Lyson. Hold Back the Dawn was presented to the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, whose current release is the Technicolor production Streets of Laredo, starring William Holden, William Bendix, and McDonald Carey, having its world premiere in Laredo, Texas, tomorrow night. Vanessa Brown will soon be seen in the Paramount William Wyler production, The Heiress. Mitchell Lyson's current production is Bride of Vengeance, starring Paulette Goddard, John Lund, and McDonald Carey. Included in tonight's cast were Raymond Burr, John Daner, and Gene Bates. Hold Back the Dawn was adapted for radio by Milton Geiger, and original music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. Production was under the supervision of Howard Wiley, associate producer Bill Karn. Your announcer has been Frank Barton. Listen again next week when the NBC Theater presents... Screen Director's Assignment, Production, Her Husband's Affairs, Director, S. Sylvan Simon, Star, Lucille Ball... <laughs> The NBC Theater came to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.